First time I had a conversation with Fino. Yeah, I noticed that he's a loving person than he, than he appears. My music process is, is quite complicated. You know why I said so? Growing up, when I started doing music, I realized that I can make like seven to ten songs in a day. Just lock me up in the studio. I draw, I draw inspiration from a whole lot of people. I listen to a whole lot of songs. Christian songs, the one the church people call worldly songs. I like songs. My dad used to own a music store. Yes. He used to be a local DJ. You know, what most people don't understand is that this music piece is like your own profession, like a doctor out there. You don't just wake up one morning and become the best doctor or the best journalist. It's a process. Do you think Yoruba rap sells more than Igbo rap? What is Igbo rap and what is Yoruba rap? We have people like Fino, people like Olamide. But you find that their music tends to be more spread out than Igbo rappers. And it's not like Igbo rappers are not doing good or like their music is not top notch. If, if Fino can be grouped into uh, an Igbo rapper, just an Igbo rapper, which Yoruba rapper is greater than Fino? The reason why you feel the way you feel because most people from the West do the Afrobeat. And right now, Afrobeat is what we're exporting right now. To be very honest, I feel almost all the artists you have here from the East are independent artists. So, if you could change one thing, what would it be? I would change how the media makes this process very easy for people. You know, the media paints say that you start your music today and you're blown tomorrow. Uh, tell me, uh, your slogan, Nyanwe, what does it mean to you? That's the boy with the smoke. Who's the biggest uh, artist you've ever worked with? Yeah, Fino. What was it like working with Fino? It's like a dream come true. I know I'm going to work with my boy someday. I'd love to be in the same studio with Olani Day Badu. Hi guys, welcome to Smoke Room, the podcast about everything and anything. It's your host, Afweke. And um, with me today is someone special, someone legendary, someone on the come up, yeah? And we're here to discuss music and, you know, its entry cases. Yo, it's the Black Boy Banks. We are on low. <laughs> I love that line. And I'm in the house to talk about everything music. Okay, very good. So, um, for starters, who is Aguero Banks? Aguero Banks is your go to guy. Go to guy about? Yeah. About everything in real life, in music. You feel like your music is relatable and it's about real life. For everybody. I can vibe with that. So what kind of music do you make? I make real life music. Uh, do you have any genre that you feel like I'm a hip hop artist. Within? I'm a hip hop artist. I mean, you're dressed like one I should have known. Straight up. <laughs> so um, let's talk about your music background a bit. Like who do you feel influences your music? Who do you feel like you draw inspiration from? Abby, do you even draw inspiration from anybody? <clears throat> I draw I draw inspiration from a whole lot of people. You know, coming up, I listen to a whole lot of people coming up. My dad used to own a music store. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yes. He used to be a local DJ. What <laughs> 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 <My> DJ? <laughs> so growing up, I listened to a whole lot of songs, Christian songs, the one the church people call worldly songs. Mm -hmm. You know, I listen to a whole, high life songs. I listen to a whole lot of songs. So my inspiration comes from a whole lot of places. Okay, off the top of your head, name like three people. Three people. Yes. Not in a specific order. Okay. Uh, Fino. Of course, I could see that. You know, Pami uh, Udubonch. Who? Pami Udubonch. Hmm, I'm a Tapa Mouse. I have to go check out that one. Itone Nugu. No, 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 no. I'm an Onicha Bay. That's why you don't know Pami Udubonch. <laughs> Feel me? Uh, I draw my inspiration from Joe Cole. Feel me? J. Cole. J. Cole. Okay. Mm. At what point did you decide to say, fuck it? It's all music, in, uh, like from now on. Like, when did you fully start as a musician you know chase the dream i've been 
I've been doing music for a long time now. I, I've been doing music even before I got admission into, into university. Oh, okay. How old, how old were you? When I started music? Yeah. <clears throat> I can't really give... I can't, I can't give a specific age, but uh, I started music a long time ago. But professionally, when I said, fuck it, I'm on this thing I want to do right now. Yes. That should be after school, you know? What did you study? I studied sociology. And you graduated? Ha, ah, graduated sure. now. Sure. 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 <laughs> okay. So, what approach do you think to, uh, take to your songwriting? Like, do you have a process to it? You know, I, if anybody listens to your rap, and you rap a lot in Igbo, it's very relatable. So, how do you come up with those lines? Mm, it's natural. You feel me? It's natural. And most times, apart from saying it's natural, I do research. Okay. Yeah, I, I like learning new things. So... Mm. And my music process is, is quite complicated. You know why I said so? Why? Growing up, I, when I started doing music, <clears throat> I realized that I can, make like, I can make like seven to ten songs in a day. Just lock me up in the studio. Really? No cap. But growing up now, and recently, I will not even say growing up, like say I don't grow up. If you mean recently, I realized that I've been spending more time in my craft. How so? What do you mean by that? Like, I will not rush and do a song now. Okay. Yes, of course, put out quality work, something that you'd be proud of, you know? So, my creative process right now is to listen to, listen to a beat. Most times, I draw inspirations from the beats. Okay. You get me? So, I listen. you have producers that send you beats? I have oh. producers I work with. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, I can hear a beat now and I'll be inspired to talk about this particular topic. I like talking about a particular topic. Each song has a topic. So, most times I just, I think of the topic and I build around the topic. Can I ask you a question? Okay. Mm. So, in this, in one of your songs, you said, Hapo I boy, hapo IG, put a real life boy, gay, jelly, something like that. Right? Yeah, what does that mean? Mm, anybody that knows me knows that I'm a real life gangster. Like, no, the imabu mm. moyibo, mm. so we understand things different way. That boy, gay, jelly, like, boy, gay, jelly, real life, EJ now. Going for real life, EJ, like all the EJ now, imakwa. Well, okay. Open me for BJJ, but if you know, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, so so far, uh, has there been any important, you know, anecdotes like something that has happened to you in your journey that you feel like formed part of who you are right now? Milestones. Everything. Everything that has happened so far formed most of who I am. Okay. Everything, both the milestones, both the setbacks. Because, you know, what most people don't understand is that this music P is like your own profession. Like a doctor out there, you get me? You don't just wake up one morning and become the best doctor or the best, uh, the best journalist. It's a process. It's a process, you feel me? God, you make me love you more. <laughs> You're speaking deep, 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 this. Anyway, so, um, do you have a, f a favorite music genre? Like, the uh, any favorite part of music that you love? Mm, Hip-hop. Hip-hop. I feel like hip-hop gives people the liberty to tell their story. So, how do you incorporate it in your music? I'm a hip-hop artist. I do... To, to group it into January, I, I would say I do Afro drill. Feel me? Okay. Afro what? Afro drill. 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 Drill is uh, it's a hip-hop sound also. Okay. Feel me? 
I feel like I could identify with your music as trap too. Igbo trap. I don't know. I'd like to think that Igbo people are also trapping. You know, it's not just a trap. Yeah. Trap is trap is a hip hop sound also. Oh yes. You feel me? But you cannot listen to my project God is Never Late and call it a trap project. It's a hip hop project. Okay. Okay. So let's get um, up close and personal a bit. Mm. Uh, you know, hear your thoughts on certain topics. Okay. Do you think your rap sells more than Igbo rap? What is Igbo rap and what is Yoruba rap? Okay, let me break it down to the artists. Okay. We have people like Fino. Which Igbo rappers do I know? You know, the Igbo rappers, we know them. Like, you And mean then you the... have people like Olamide. You have people like. I'm not sure off the top of my head now, I can't call their names. But you find that their music tend to be more global. Is, is that the right word? More spread out than Igbo rappers. And it's not like Igbo rappers are not doing good or like their music is not top notch. It's just, it's just the way it is. I don't know in my own opinion. You know, I don't, I don't, I actually know what you mean by Igbo rappers and Yoruba rappers, but in this context right now, I would say I don't know what you mean. You feel me? You mentioned, if I should go by the names you mentioned, you mentioned Fino. If if Fino can be grouped into uh, an Igbo rapper, just an Igbo rapper, which Yoruba rapper is greater than Fino? Since you said you will play Yoruba rap more than the Igbo no, rap. No, no, I'm not saying I play. I mean, I'm describing the kind of music that is more spread out, more global, you know? Okay, I'll put it this way now. Okay. I feel the reason why you feel... Um, the reason why you feel the, the Yoruba, way the, way, the reason why you feel the way you feel is because most people from the West, mm -hmm. they do, they do, uh, they do the Afro beat. Okay, very good. I and right now, Afro beat, Afro beat is what we export, exporting right now. Not only, the case is not only in Nigeria, it's a world, I will not say it's a problem, it's a world yeah. thing, you feel me? Yes. So, that's it. I think you express my thoughts better than me because it's not Igbo rap, Yoruba rap. It's more like music from the West being exported. Okay. So if you could change one thing about the Nigerian music industry, what would it be? I mean, you're in the industry. You've experienced a few things, enough to form an opinion. Okay. This is real life. Mm. So if you could change one thing, what would it be? I would change how the media makes this process very easy for people. They make their what? The process, the music process, yes. very easy. How you know, the media paints say that you start your music today and you're blown tomorrow, deceiving the audience and the people out there. How so? so? How tall? You said if I have the power yes. to change something. I said I will change <clears throat> how the music is being presented. Okay. You feel me? Mm -hmm. We have to we have to start a reorientation. You feel me? To the audience, the, even to people who are who are coming into the industry. Mm -hmm. You have to tell them that this is a process. You have to go through a process. You don't just come today and you expect to no. Be. I get your point now. So as uh, as a music musician from the East, um, what record levels exist in the East? I'm not even aware of any, but if I start, it's going to be a Yoruba thing. It's more of, of, of like a West thing, like you said, YBNL, um, Kozum, I don't know. But there is none from I East that To be truthful, aware. to At be very honest, to be very honest, mm -hmm. I feel almost all the artists you have here from the East are independent artists. Okay, yes, I agree. That would make more sense than asking about record, about le record levels. Uh, do you find the Nigerian music industry limiting, like limiting in the sense that you find it hard to break in as a new artist? No. 
because you said if there is one thing you would change is the way people enter the industry. Yes, no, and it's more easier to break in. Like, you can break in from your house. Really? Yes. There's the social media out there. Yes, but not in the way... You know what I mean, break out? You, you don't just break out and they hear your name for like a year. You are at least... You are known for at least five years span. That's 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 where the process comes in. If you've been building before you get known, you will not get off the limelight again. Oh, okay. That's a good perspective. So, as someone that is on the rise and you're young, I think, I think you're young. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think I, I, I researched your age. So, did you ever experience any form of intimidation or bullying, you know? As someone that was on the come up, bullying from who? I don't know. You tell me. Maybe someone. I'm a from street the music boy. I'm industry. a street boy. I grew up in the streets. Feel so me. So it's a scenario you are used to. Yes. So no. I okay. Okay. Let's narrow it down. In the music industry. Nobody can bully me. Nobody can bully. <laughs> I've never experienced that. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, I know the big, this is a stupid question, but I wrote it, so I'm going to ask it. Who's the biggest uh, artist you've ever worked with? Biggest artist I've ever worked with, yes. Thus far? Yeah, so Fino, far. Fino. Yeah, I knew, I knew, I knew. What was the name of the song again? Still Sober. Still Sober. Okay, uh, what was it like working with Fino on Still Sober? It was like a dream come true. What was the creative process? Like, who did my Fino book? My mama saw it. <laughs> I mean, if I see him on a concert, maybe, maybe I just might do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I noticed the first time yes. I had a conversation with Fino. Uh-huh. Yeah, I noticed that he's a loving person than he, than he appears. For real? Yeah. No, tough people are usually like that. Like it's me. It's a facade. Like me, you know. To protect yourself from people that don't need to get in. Oh, like he was more loving than I thought. Like he's the type of person that wants to know how you're doing. Oh, Fino, <laughs> you're making me shy. He wants to know how you're doing. He wants to know the next thing you want to do. He wants to know what's up with you. Like he's, I don't know, genuinely interested, interested in what you're doing. Oh, I need a Fino in my life. Mm, you need, you need one. <laughs> Okay, uh, so who else are you looking forward to working with? Like, if you could work with, pick any three people and work with. Uh, any within three Nigeria, people. Uh, within Nigerian artists, who would they be? Who would they be? I would love to work with Bonaboy someday. I know I'm going to work course, with Bonaboy someday. Of course. You know. And I could see you guys doing something like, and you guys have similar similar style. You know, so, you know, you know, with, the, the, with the city thing. boys, you know, with the okay. city boys. Okay, that's one. Two more. Two more. Two more. You know, you said Nigeria, right? Yes. Okay. I've said Bonner boy. I would love to be locked in the stu- in same studio. With Belash Mother. Hmm. Surprising. Surprisingly. I don't see it. Yeah, okay. Third person. Third person. I love to be in the same studio with Olami De Badu. Of course. Uh, uh, but why are there no female artists? Female artists. Come on now. In all three, I wonder why you consider. You gave me, you gave me okay, just three, three female artists. Three give me from, uh, f- from our female artists. Give me I've three. worked with, I've worked with. I've worked with Gucci, you feel me? Really? Yeah. She's on my album. She's good? She's good. And you like the creative process? If I don't like you, first of all, you will not you be on my song. Album. Yeah. Okay, so second person. Second person I would love to work with, a female. I would love to work with Semi. She has hmm. this angelic yes, voice, you know? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, third person. Third person. Third person. Third person. Third person. You don't have to think that hard. 
you know, he didn't ask people I love, like, he asked people I would love to make a record. To work with. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, if you didn't like someone, you wouldn't have them on their albums. So I'm assuming that the, the two are... And before I give you a name, I'm trying to visualize how the song will come out. Oh, <laughs> oh, interesting. You're very interesting. Um, I love to work with Danny. Oh, Thames, baby. Okay. Do you hear what I said? Temi or Thames? I said Tenny Makanaki. Tenny? Makanaki. I can see it. He, uh, 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 I don't know, she has switched up her style a bit. But you her love it. boyish era and your era, like, could I, I can see it clicking. Mm, you know what I mean? Okay, 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 okay. Moving on. Uh, tell me uh, your slogan, Unyangur. What does it mean to you? That's the boy with the smoke. I, do you identify as a stoner? I'm a stoner. Hi. Hi. Shoknokos. Okay. That's all. Um, so, as a young artist, uh, trying to, uh, that is already in the music industry, what are the challenges that you feel you faced? I faced. So far. Like you said, there are setbacks, there are challenges on the way. <clears throat> you know, every good artist, every good artist, I feel every good artist mm -hmm. always has one problem. Which is? Money. Funds. Okay. So that used to be a problem. You feel me? Mm -hmm. You know, it gets some kind of time when me and my guy go there. Be like, man, when we say money day, guy, we know they talk this kind of talk. Oh. And it's not, it's not even limited to an artist. Every Most creative, yes. every creative, you get my guy go talk say money without plan without money not plan thing. You no know, go really work out. Nothing go happen without money. So money, money, money. So in the industry, eh, what what do you think is the importance of networking and making the right connection? Do you, is there even such a thing as networking in the music industry? Yeah, yeah. Same as every other industry, you need the right collaborations to get to a certain region or... Sell yourself. Yeah, sell yourself, you know. Okay. So... Um, how do you do that? There are two ways a collaboration can happen. See that through friendship or through business. Okay, okay, okay. So most times, you just... Most times, you're doing this because this person is your... Or you're doing this thing for this person because he's your friend. You have... A certain relationship with yeah. him. Most times it's the business, the split shit, the money. You feel me? That's how collaborations come about. Come about. Okay. Um, so far, what's one valuable lesson that you've learned along the way on your journey? That access is a privilege. Don't fuck it up. Bam. Access is a privilege. Don't, Don't fuck, fuck it up. It I should write that down. Um, any latest projects, singles, album? Let's talk about it. Are you serious? God is, God is never, never late. late. <laughs> God is never late. It's literally everywhere. <laughs> I saw the signboard on my way back from the gym, and I was like, ah, I'm interviewing this next day. <laughs> no. God is never late. God is never late. It's everywhere now. For two months now. How for the past two months. Going massively. Uh, from next week now, we'll be on tour. God is never late tour. We'll be in Anambra uh, from the 3rd of November. All through November, we'll be outside. Anambra, Enugu, Ebony. We're outside. We're outside. <laughs> okay. Um, any collaborations in the work? Uh, yeah, you, yeah. You God know? is never late deluxe is, is in the works. We'll be out soon. Okay. Are you featuring any? Mm, I would like to keep it discreet for now. Okay. Okay, okay, very discreet indeed. So, any insights and advice that you would want to give to like younger artists, the ones that are still trying to come up? Keep growing, keep growing with your friends. Convince one person to be a member today. Tomorrow, that person will convince another person. That's how the ministry grows. It's not magic. Keep you get? growing. Keep growing. With your with your friends. Your friends have to believe in what you're doing first. Giving me two advice that I'll still ask you later on so I can write it down on this show. The first one was 
Access is a privilege. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. I love that. So perseverance and resilience, you mm. know. Why is it important staying true to your own vision, like one's artistic vision? Okay. There are two things involved. First is to have a vision. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has a vision. Okay. You get. Then when you have a vision, the next thing is to keep is to um stick to it. Stick to the plans. Stick to the plans. You get? So sometimes most times it's not even all about you. That's why you need a team. You need a team so that you can get your plans out. If you want, let's say you're rolling out a project. You have plans for this project. You have expected outcomes already. You get, you need a team. Every artist needs a team, even if it's your friend. You need a team. You cannot be the artist and the, and the producer and the everything. Every team. No, <laughs> you need a team. You feel me? When, <coughs> when, you, you're, when you're, you're not sticking to the plan, you have somebody to remind you of the plan. Okay, I like that. So, um, you're someone that has also established your online audience. You, you have a bit of clout online. So, can you share a bit of tips, some tips for us for building a strong online presence? And not only that, engaging fans. I heard about you from a fan. See yeah. That, you know, and from there, I picked interest, reached out to someone, so on, so on, and here we are. I feel like that's why you... You're sounding the waves you, you you you've been sounding wow. you know how have i been sounding Every, you you are a new convert oh. you get me yes I yeah am. you're a new member every top member like they know say this thing now our own <laughs> you get me they know say now our thing we they do like this so in building an online presence you have to be there that's your p you wake up in the morning, you're looking for the next thing to post. You're looking for the next thing, because this is not your shop. You feel me? You wake up for money, people don't come, they wait for you, may you open. Wait till you get a sample today. And you need to be uh, uh, in their faces. You need to be in everybody's faces. That's your work. That's your P. So if you're building, if you're if you an artist and you're building, I'm not trying to give advice, you feel me? I'm not even the most perfect person. But I, I feel well, like... I see your point. I feel like if you're an artist, you need to post things on your page. You need to be there. You need to interact with these people. Be organic. Tell them, say, now you, they run this P. Because nobody wants to support a robot. Okay. I get that. Well, it's been interesting having you on the show. One more question. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? I'm an introvert yet introvertedly extrovert. <laughs> Is there anything like that? Yes, ambivert. You have a bit of both Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. I like I like I like stepping out, but recently I can't step out unless it's the P, you know. You know how it goes. You're pushing P. You feel me? Alright guys, it's been a really interesting episode. I've learned a, t a thing or two and personally I felt like hmm, maybe this guy was, was talking to me. And I hope you learned a thing or two about our guy as a new convert. It's now our P. It's now our guy, Aguero Banks. Now our team. And, you know, thank you so much for coming. You look good, by the way. I love your shoes. Thank you. Your outfits, your shades. Thank you. Everything. So, see you next time. Akweke signing out. We are